This series is really going to focus on the communication elements of leadership and where those two intersect. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, communication in general, and the communication process and how those things impact and influence leadership and are involved in the leadership process. So to start, I'd like to take a look at the transactional model of communication. Now, we're not going to get into great detail here. There are other videos available where you can learn in more depth about the transactional model of communication. If you're not familiar with it, I'll put a link in the area below here where you can find one of those. Just want to do a quick review of this model, though, so we're on the same page and then talk about how each of these elements are involved in leadership. So first we start with communicator A in the transactional model. Communicator A is the person who has something that they wish to communicate, the person or persons who have something that they wish to communicate. So we start there. Uh, then we move to communicator B, which is the person or persons on the other side of this equation, right? We're communicating to someone. And so uh, that person is communicator A. Now note that these people are both senders and receivers of information. It's not one or the other. We are uh, all the people on all sides are, are constantly sending and receiving information. So um, it's not just one or the other. That's why we call them communicator A and communicator B as opposed to sender and receiver or something along those lines. So we have communicator A and communicator B. Communicator A has a message that they wish to communicate to communicator B. They're, they're send, they have some content that they wish that person to understand. And so they're, they're going to try and encode that in a way that, that the other person can understand it and decode that effectively. Um, they're going to do that somehow. And that how is what we call channel, how you're communicating. Are you, are you texting this person? Are you emailing? Are you speaking to them face to face? Are you talking over the phone? Are you sending smoke signals or using post-it notes or what is that you're using to communicate to this person? That's the channel. So the message is the, what the, what of what's being communicated. The channel is how that message is being communicated. Now, again, both people are senders and receivers here. So communicator B has this impact of feedback this element of feedback that they're communicating in response to the message of communicator A. And this is all happening simultaneously, right? It's not that uh, communicator A sends a message and then there's a delay or whatever. And, and the feedback comes uh, while I'm speaking to somebody, I'm checking their facial expressions or I'm, you know, their, their tone of voice. They may interrupt me or they may be doing something else. They may fall asleep. That's all types of feedback, right? And it's happening right at the same time. So, and so the message and feedback system is going to happen all simultaneously. So communicator A has a message they want to send and communicator B is going to be communicating feedback to them. All of that's taking place through uh, one or more channels of communication, which is again, the how. Uh, we also have this element of noise or interference in all of this, right? Noise is anything that interferes with the sending or receiving of the message, whether that's external noise from the environment, meaning things you're hearing that are, that are keeping you from, from listening effectively or whatever. It's too noisy. It's too distracting, or it could be that it's too hot or too cold or too, or you're hungry or whatever. There, there are lots of different, uh, um, noise elements that, uh, that, um, could be in play here as well. Then we have context. The last of these elements is context, right? That, uh, that, um, that there's uh, this communication is taking place somewhere and in some circumstance and in some particular context, communication does not take place in a vacuum. It happens somewhere and between some people and there's a relationship there and there's uh, so forth. So, um, anyway, that's, that's what we mean by context in general. Uh, again, there's much more we could depth that we could go into here in the transactional model. This was just a quick review of the seven elements of the communication process here so that we can then break these down as far as how they impact leadership. And so with that, let's look at the implications of these things for leadership. Um, first of all, communicator A, you know, the person who is, let's, let's call this person the leader or these people, this person or persons, the leader in leadership, right? So uh, communicator, right? We need to think about as leaders in, in terms of leadership, who are you? Who are you to these people? The, the people that are theoretically following you, are you somebody that they know somebody that they respect, or are you in an authoritative position? And, and maybe you haven't earned their trust or their respect yet, but you have that leadership via um, sort of management and you're working to emerge as a leader in your own right as a manager, who are you? Um, are you somebody who's accomplished something or are you new or an, an unknown? Um, we need to understand and be realistic with ourselves about who we are as leaders in order to effectively uh, communicate uh, with 
people as the followers. So communicator A involves an understanding of who you are, both as a person and as a leader. What are your skills? What are your qualities? What's your experience? And so forth. When we think about communicator B, we're really thinking about then who's the audience. Who's the person or persons on the other side of this? Who are we trying to lead? And again, what do they know about us? What's our relationship with them? Um, is this a, an authoritative situation where I'm their supervisor? Or is this just totally a volunteer type thing where I'm asking them to, to just put their faith in me and trust me, you know, and trying to emerge through other avenues of leadership, through charisma, through inspiration, through, you know, solid ideas and, and leading from the front or, or being a servant leader or so forth. All types of things. Who are who are these people? What's going to work best with them? Um, how do I need to communicate with them? And what's that situation between the two of us or between them, me and the group or the groups and whoever, you know, depending on whether you have one or more people as communicator A and or communicator B. Uh, we also need to think about the message and specifically in leadership. Uh, we're going to focus on as, as leaders, uh, the language that we're using. Language is incredibly important. Right? Language is is crucial. Uh, and, uh, you know, language is deeply varied. We have all kinds of options uh, in language uh, because we're constantly making up new words and, and constructing new things. So the, the language choices that we make are incredibly important. Um, we think about these things when we're talking about communicating up, for example, when we're talking to a manager or somebody who's above us in a hierarchical structure or communicating down when we're communicating with people who are underneath us in, in a hierarchical sense in an organizational structure. Um, so what kind of, how are those languages going to be different? How are we going to use language differently in those situations? How are we going to use language differently if we're in a situation where we have some sort of authoritative power. Not only am I a leader, but I'm a manager and I have authoritative power over these people. Then that can impact my language choices as opposed to if I'm in a situation where I'm leading volunteers. People aren't required to be there. People who, you know, that's that's going to affect my language choices if, if I know that they have the option to just walk away. Right. So uh, language becomes very important as a part of that message. And also, you know, obviously what you're communicating, what, what is your vision? What is your idea? What is your, your goal here? Uh, you're communicating that clearly through the message and using language in that way as well. So language incredibly important in communicating that message. Uh, for the channel, I really want to focus on as, as a leader for the channel, uh, making sure that we are choosing the right tool for the job, right? The right tool for the job. Uh, hopefully you have a lot of tools in your communication tool belt and in your leadership school tool belt so that you have a lot that you can draw from. If you're trying to build a house and you only have a hammer, that's going to be a challenge. I mean, is it possible? Yeah. And is it possible to golf, to, to golf 18 holes using only your driver or only your putter? Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. But is that going to be the most effective way to do so? And, uh, and, and, give you the best opportunity for success? Uh, no, it's not. So when we're thinking about the channel of communication, we need to choose the right tool for the job. There are some situations where an email works really well or a text works really well, but there are others where you really have to have that face-to-face -face conversation. So we need to make that happen. Um, there are other, you know, the thinking about things like uh, as a manager, as a leader, I always think about if I'm thinking about holding a meeting for something, my first thought is, okay, does this require a meeting or can I accomplish this in an email or some other format and not have to take people's time with a meeting? And, and you know, there are lots of things like that. So what's that? But there are times when I think, you know, meeting is absolutely necessary here. Um, so we need to choose the right tool for the job and consider the channel, uh, consider the fact that um, texting and emailing are more um, channel lean, right? We don't have access as receivers to as many channels. We can't hear that person's voice. We can't see their facial expressions. So if it's a, it's a message that could be interpreted differently um, or, or in a way that we don't want or intend, then we might consider not using that channel. That's very channel lean. And maybe, maybe a face-to-face -face conversation would be better, or at least a phone call where they can hear our, our voice and tone of voice. But, um, so we need to consider the channel very carefully. It's a very important part of leadership is choosing these channels appropriately and choosing the right tool for the job when it comes to communicating these things. When we think about feedback, we need to, uh, to have a couple things in mind. Um, first of all, uh, emotional intelligence right? And nonverbal communication are important in, uh, in feedback. Um, when we look at, at nonverbal communication, we need to be able to, to pay attention to somebody's 
facial expressions, even, even if we're in charge, even if it's an authoritative situation, we need to look, be able to, to read that person's body language and to kind of read the room a little bit if it's a group and, and understand how that body language and how the, that nonverbal communication, what that's communicating to us. And then we can make adjustments accordingly. As leaders, we need to be, you know, sensitive to those types of things. And as leaders, we also need to demonstrate effective emotional intelligence. We need to not only be in touch with our own emotions, be able to identify and effectively manage and, and, and communicate our own emotions, but also recognize and, and work to, to sort of manage in a sense, the emotions of others. So um, we need to develop skills toward emotional intelligence as well. That's really important. Thinking about noise as an implication for leadership, we need to prepare for distractions. We need to understand that people are distracted, that we're distracted. And depending on the situation, we, we really need to focus on eliminating those distractions as a leader. Uh, for others and for ourselves. If we're, uh, you know, holding a one-on-one -on -one conversation and, and really it's something um, sort of important or um, uh, that, that requires our full attention, then we need to shut our, our email down and we need to put our phone somewhere that it's not going to be a distraction. We need to give our full attention to that. And if we can't, then we need to arrange a time when we can and say, look, I can't, I you know, I'm not in a position to really focus on this the way that I want to right now. So can we do this, you know, at this particular time when we can really uh, have the time to focus on this intently and, and give it our best listening skills and, and, and which is not what I have to offer right now. So we need to prepare for those distractions, really trying to remove those distractions as much as possible as a leader so that everything's getting our full attention. But we need to understand that not everything can get our full attention all the time. So we need to manage those things. And as far as context, understanding that there is a time and a place for everything and that there's a time and a place that that communication takes place. So if it's happening right now, okay, what's the time and place here? And what's appropriate for me to, to discuss and what's the appropriate tone for me to take and so forth. Or if there's, you know, I'm going to have a sensitive conversation with somebody, what's the appropriate time and place for that? And let's arrange that. Let's make sure that we're in a good position again to remove those distractions and, and to, that I can best focus on those nonverbals and, and, and emphasize my emotional intelligence, really employ that. Um, but we need to think about what's the most appropriate time and place for this conversation and this communication. And if it's not now, then when can we set this up so that it, would be the appropriate time and place. Right? And really though, these leadership and communication overlap in so many important ways. You know, it's, it's difficult to be an effective leader if you do not have uh, good communication skills. Okay. Uh, so communication really plays an important role in your effectiveness as a leader. So we need to work on developing our communication skills in conjunction with our other uh, leadership skills that we're going to be working on. If you have questions about about how all this uh, works and, and how it impacts uh, everything with communication, please feel free to uh, email me. I would love to chat with you via email and discuss that with you. So in the meantime, I hope you'll really think about where these things intersect and how they influence one another in the overarching uh, work of developing leadership skills in conjunction and, uh, and influenced by your communication skills.